What's up guys, welcome to Daily Dose of Reddit. This is your host, Zach, and today's subreddit is r slash entitled parents. Homophobic entitled aunt finds out I'm not straight. Hello, Sherubs, I'm back. Ah. So we're in lockdown at the minute, and I figured why not post another installment about my entitled aunt. It can help me pass some time and act as a kind of therapy. Not been a fun week. Anyways, I'll probably post about how my entitled aunt reacted when she found out that I was a drag queen at some point this week. Not much else to do when you can't leave the house. But this story will focus on her meltdown upon finding out I was gay. Entitled aunt was right. What? Shocker. Seriously though, I don't believe that my favorite color or toys as a child turned me gay. I was a fabulous bitch from the moment I was born. Ha <laughs> ha! Anyways, I'd have been 15 at the time of the story. Now, it's around this age that kids, in the area I grew up anyways, would start to get their first boyfriends and girlfriends. Nothing serious or anything, puppy love I guess. It was around this time that I started to realize that I wasn't attracted to girls. I thought they were pretty, funny, smart, etc, but I never wanted a girlfriend. It didn't take me long to figure out that I was gay. My mom had several gay friends and even she herself is bisexual, so coming out was something that I never really feared. I told my mom I was gay when we were watching a movie and she just gave me a hug and told me that she loved me no matter what. Oh. Anyways, a couple of weeks later, we headed to my grandma and grandpa's house for a family barbecue and, of course, entitled aunt was there. Now, important note, I had brought my boyfriend with me. We had been best friends since we were like five and had started dating about a week or so before I told my mom. He's bisexual, so we'd been dating for just under a month at this point. Entitled aunt was the only one that didn't know about this, for obvious reasons. Now back to the story. We arrived at about one o'clock to help set up the tables for the rest of the family. The only other people there were my grandparents, my uncle, mom's side, uncle's wife, my older cousin, entitled aunt, and entitled cousin. Everything was okay for a while, but of course, this didn't last. My grandpa was always welcoming to any friends or partners of the family, so he made sure that my boyfriend felt welcome. After about an hour, my grandpa, uncle, and boyfriend decided to head up to the attic to get some fishing gear for my boyfriend. My grandpa was a hoarder intended to buy a lot of stuff from car boot sales that he would give away to family and friends. Does anyone else's grandparents do that, or is it just mine? That left myself, mom, grandma, older cousin, and entitled aunt. Uncle's wife had gone to the store and entitled cousin was playing in the park across the street. I was in the middle of braiding my older cousin's hair when my boyfriend left, so he gave me a peck on the cheek and headed upstairs. And of course, entitled aunt was staring. What was that? What was what? Did he just kiss you? <laughs> Oh, um, yeah. You're not gonna do something about it? What do you mean, Entitled Aunt? I mean, you should knock that fairy out. Be a man for once, OP. Do you really want random... Homophobic slurs taking advantage of you like that? But, uh, he's not taking advantage. Boys don't kiss other boys, OP. You know that. He's supposed to be a friend and friends don't kiss each other. Back your line, Stardust. I have a bunch of friends, male and female, that I have no issue being affectionate with. Grandma says, Oh, boyfriend isn't OP's friend. He's his boyfriend. Aren't they sweet? I love my grandma to pieces. She thought entitled aunt only had a problem because she thought boyfriend and I were just friends. What? You're not serious, are you? OP's a homophobic slur. Yes, boyfriend is OP's boyfriend. They are an adorable couple and everyone in the family has been accepting. Everyone else knows apart from me. OP, why would you do this to me? Entitled aunt, I didn't want to accept exclude you, but I knew you were gonna act like this when I told you. Older cousin says, You constantly berate him for not being man enough and use disgusting slurs when you talk about him. Can you blame OP for not wanting to tell you? I never meant it. That's just how I talk. If OP told me, then I would have stopped. No, you wouldn't. He's asked you to stop countless times. So have I. Why do you think I stopped talking to you for ages? I'm not having that kind of attitude around my son. He's not gonna feel unwelcome in his own family. But I'm not trying to make him uncomfortable. I can help him now that I know what the problem is. What do you mean, help him? It's obvious, isn't it? He just hasn't met the right girl yet. He's only little. I'm not five, entitled aunt. 
I'll help set him up with a nice girl. There are several lovely girls in the neighborhood who would love a boyfriend like OP. She then turned to me, held my hand, I'd finished Cousin's hair by now, and smiled at me. Doesn't that sound nice, OP? We'll get you a nice little girlfriend. A sweet boy like you wouldn't have any problems with girls, right? Okay, first, she winked at me. Gross. And secondly, <laughs> I don't want a girlfriend entitled aunt. I don't want a girlfriend. I'm happy the way I am. You can't be happy like that, so all you're gonna end up dead because of this. People get killed for being like that, you know? They get murdered by bigots like you who don't think it's right. It isn't right. I'm only looking out for OP. Older cousin, if you weren't so obsessed with looking kind, then you tell him what he's doing is wrong. I don't want this kind of influence around, entitled cousin. Then don't bring her to family events then. Entitled aunt, ignoring older cousin and looking at my mom. You know, there's some places in the world that do conversion therapy. I could help you a little to pay for him to get that. They'll be able to fix them. No, just no, entitled aunt. At this point, my cousin looks like she's about to punch this baseball pitcher into next week, and my mom and grandma are focused on trying to help me calm down. I felt like I was on the verge of a panic attack. You encourage this, pointing at my mom. You let him act like a homophobic slur all the time when he was little playing with bobbies and wearing pink all the time actually it was purple and red entitled aunt get your facts straight Biah! that's enough if i hear any more of this nonsense then you and entitled cousin can get your stuff and leave you're not making my grandson uncomfortable on my watch but I said enough. If you want to act like a psycho about it, then how about you go to your own mom's house? Grandma knew this would piss off Entitled Aunt. Entitled Aunt's mom and dad stopped talking to her after they caught her stealing from them. The only reason my grandparents allowed her to visit was so that Entitled Cousin wouldn't feel abandoned. Plus, they kept an eye on her and made sure nothing went missing. Entitled Aunt looked like she both wanted to slap my grandma and burst into tears. Nothing else was said about that for the most part. My grandma pulled me aside and reminded me that she loved me and told me to ignore Entitled Aunt. She's just a bigot. I found out later that Entitled Aunt had been telling other family members about me being gay, hoping they'd side with her. They didn't. She eventually left after a couple of hours, but made sure to share things online about conversion therapy, how gay people can be cured, and even gave my number to a few of her friend's daughters and nieces, trying to set me up with them. I actually have one of the girls as a friend online. She thought that Entitled Aunt was being ridiculous. Boyfriend and I dated until we were around 17. We are still good friends in text and video call whenever we can. He's currently studying abroad. I love studying broads. He and my current boyfriend are really good friends as well. So that was my story of how my psychotic entitled aunt found out I was gay. I'm surprised she was actually shocked by it. I think everyone in my family saw it coming. Anyways, I hope to be able to post another installment soon. Stay safe, my lovelies. I hope y'all are having a great day despite the lockdown and stuff. Anyways, uh, <laughs> your aunt is something else. All right, this next story is called It's Italian Tradition. This story takes place during the week my wife and I got married. I was 28 at the time. We had a destination wedding in the Bahamas and it was amazing. We had 15 people able to join us. We had picked Bahamas as it was the first place my wife and I ever did a vacation to and it's where I proposed to her. So for us, the week was pure magic. Now onto the story of my mother. I would write about her antics during the whole week, but I don't think people want to read a book, so I'll only talk about the wedding day itself. It's Wednesday, middle of our trip. Both me and my wife wanted to follow the don't see each other before the wedding rule. We've gotten some flack for it, but whatever. We were getting married off the resort in a small blue church in a nature sanctuary. I was to go first and my wife would follow. While waiting on the rides for me, my best man, and our guests, my mom kept saying things like, it's an Italian tradition for the mother to take photos with the groom before the wedding. It's an Italian tradition for the mother to take photos with the best man and guests. This was getting annoying, but then my mother pulls me aside and starts to have a heart-to-heart -heart talk to me, which I thought was going to go one way. It was basically a lecture about how important she is and how selfish I was. She ended it with, It's also an Italian tradition to wear these cufflinks. 
I was expecting cufflinks that my grandpa wore at his wedding. I respected him greatly. He was a huge influence in my life. She pulls out these dollar store cufflinks and kept trying to pass them off as a family heirloom. I later found out that she had bought them in the Bahamas as an impulse buy. Also, my suit wasn't made with cufflinks in mind. Anyway, as the rides show up, Oh, don't forget, it's Italian tradition for the mother to walk the son down the aisle. Everyone looked at her like she was crazy because even my dumbass knows that's not a tradition anywhere. I called her out on that and she starts arguing with me. She sort of relents and tells me, Well, if you're gonna break your mother's heart, at least follow the Italian tradition of making your brother the usher. I told her that like only six people were coming with me, but fine, whatever. We finally leave, my mother staying behind to stay with the bride's side. Lord knows what crap she tried to pull with her. We get to the nature sanctuary and go to the small blue church that can hold maybe 40 people. Everyone just sits where they want and my brother stands by the door. Now, my wife's maid of honor is her best friend and she's a sickeningly amazing person. Honestly, she's properly the most selfless person on the planet. However, her only flaw is that she is very loud. I bring that up because when my wife and everyone with her pulls up, you can hear her maid of honor and the distance between us is large. I perk up and get ready when my brother, who is still standing by the door, says, OP, I'm gonna go have a smoke and explore the park. And I tell him, we just heard them pull up. No. He tries arguing with me, but finally just shuts up and gives me dirty looks for the rest of the day. The place is huge and maze-like. The other guests show up, everyone gets their seat, we didn't care who sat where. We start the wedding and I see my soon-to-be wife as a bride come around the corner. My heart stops and I realize that this is the best moment of my life. Everyone else apparently knew what I was thinking because I had a smile that went from ear to ear. Honestly, the two seconds of her coming around the corner made all my stress vanish. My wife looked at me and gave me a huge smile as well. Seeing her walk down the aisle is a memory I replay in my head all the time. Sorry for the sappy bit. Wedding goes great. We do our vows. I can hear my best man behind me crying like his mom just died. After the ceremony, my mother is back into Italian tradition mode. It's Italian tradition for the mother to have a photo with the groom. It's Italian tradition for the mother to the right. If I were to type out everything that was Italian tradition, no one would read this. Later, when we got our photos back, my mother had this scowl on her face the entire time. There's one that's my favorite because it's during the whole, do you take OP to B part? And she has this look of like, pure disgust and hatred. It's great. So we get back to the resort. We have our reception. I think that's what it's called. Uh, I'm just an idiot and I forget. My mother tries to start it out by saying it's Italian tradition for the mother of the groom to do three speeches. My best man wasn't having that and put his foot down on who does a speech. He kicked ass at keeping her insanity in control during the week. Everyone does their speeches. My now in-laws do theirs and hand us a card. In it, it says when we get home, we will give you $1,000 as a wedding present. Awesome. My mother tried a few more Italian tradition. One was about her cutting the cake. Several were about her in various photos with people. The cap to the night after dinner, my mom walks up to me and my now wife and says to her, How much did your parents give ya? She was like, Huh? And my mother goes, Well, it's Italian tradition for the groom's parents to give double the bride's parents. We paused in confusion and told her they haven't given us anything yet but they will give us $1,000 when we get home. My mother goes, God, I'll give you $3,000 then. We were like, okay. Spoilers, my mother never gave us a single penny. It's been four years since our wedding and my mother tells people that she paid for everything. The wedding, my suit, my wife's dress, her grandma with dementia bought it for her, so that really pisses off my wife. All 17, counting my wife and me, people's airfare, hotel, wedding ceremony, and so much more. The only thing she paid for was her and my brother's trip, and the only reason my brother came was because it was a free vacation for him. And I'll end it with this fun fact. I'm half Italian, but have never once in my life done anything Italian or have acknowledged my Italian half. My wife and I also don't care about tradition. She's Polish, I'm half Italian, half Irish. We got married in a Christian Bahamian church. What's also funny is my mother refuses to call my wife her name. She just says, your wife, in a snide tone. 
how are you and your wife kind of thing. So yeah, that's my Italian tradition wedding. And yes, I've cut that toxic woman out of my life. That honestly just sounds like Michael Scott without any redeeming qualities. <laughs> because at least with Michael Scott, you know his heart's somewhat in the right place. Obviously, he likes to be the center of attention. And I'm sorry, I'm talking about The Office. I don't want to come off as basic. But just so you know, I was a fan back when I was a little kid. And my mom used to watch it. And I had a crush on Pam Beasley before it was basic. Anyways, <laughs> she's just... Oh, Oh, that's gross. But anyways, good story. Glad y'all are happy. I'm glad you enjoyed seeing your wife round the corner. I enjoyed reading. Don't forget to like, subscribe, and hit that bell to never miss an episode.